Hey guys, what's going on? It's Friday, June 21st, 2019. Just wanted to make this quick video going over my persistent data system for UE4 that works on top of Ruby on Rails, as you can see in the console above and the screen here. Here, sorry. Uh, I basically built out this entire persistent data system to handle basic MMO capabilities. Uh, and I'm kind of at an inflection point, inflection point on what I want to do with this system. Uh, it has matchmaking pools. Uh, it can handle an MMO type world or it could handle a Fortnite type system. It can basically handle anything that's dependent on dedicated servers and having a persistent profile outside of a dedicated server solution. This is really, really useful for games like Fortnite, Battle Royale, and uh, any MMO you've really ever played. There's usually an outside solution like this. Uh, I really will just quickly show you how to log in. You hit play, you hit log in, ignore this admin tool here, it shows you your profile, there's queues here. There's actually, you can't see it, but there's friends lists and everything back here behind this. Uh, those systems are implemented and working, but I just load into this right now currently to uh, set my token on the login server and if I hit end, you'll see that I'm not running on a dedicated server when that happens But if I go to my content browser and I go to my game mode and I load into my greenlands This may take a little uh, I will have to turn on my dedicated server system again, and if you watch the Rails console log, the server will load all the information first, and then the player is actually on like a, I think it's a 15 second delay or five second delay, and then the player client will initiate saying, hey, we've connected and loaded the level, we need to know our data, can you send it to us? Once the client talks to the web server, the web server talks to the server, the server talks back to the, to the web client, and then back to the client, it will enable movement and show the character visible, etc. So here we go, we'll click that. I'll also show how there's an inventory system, a loadout system, and all of that with this. So if I hit tab here, there you see all the JSON loaded for all the character profiles and everything, a lot of print screening happening there. I have my abilities here, I can drag and drop them. I have my inventory here on the right hand side. And if you watch, I can drag and drop this inventory off and you see up above, there was a JSON call there. I'm sorry, a web call there to pick it up. And if I pick it up, another call will happen to add the inventory back. Uh, I can go into my backend system, go to my user. I know that this user is this user right here. I can load in to see their character inventory and I can see each of the inventories uh, or each of the items in the inventory. This system also has a really good item modifier system that allows you to extend your items on specific parameters so that you can really control the data of how you use it. And that whole system is controlled by an inventory system here, uh, which has uh, item modifier data structures and components that you attach onto your item manager so you're able to create custom item modifiers for your game and then easily integrate it into the persistent data system.